Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the new Panasonic Vericams. Uh, it's really exciting to find these new cameras here at Able. Uh, I've had a long history with the Vericam, so it's great to see the evolution of these cameras here. Uh, I wanted to give you a little tour of these uh, new systems, uh, both uh, an external sort of modularity design feature tour, as well as a, a, a menu, basic menu feature tour as well. So this is a two-part uh, video. Part one here is a uh, external features and part two you go into how to sort of interact with it basically overall. So the obvious place to start is with the modular design, right? I actually have two cameras here, the HS, which is a, a two-third inch high-speed camera. This is a 1080p, uh, up to 240 frames per second, two-third two -third inch, it's a three MOS sensor, so three CMOS sensors are inside there. You can do that high speed up to 240. Uh, same traditional interface, B4 mount is any two through there's camera though. Uh, amazing that it can go up to 240 though, which is really rare in that world of two third inch. Uh, and so really great application, sports, nature, a lot of things out there. So a great option uh, overall. And then here is the uh, 35, the Vericam 35 head. This gives you a super 35 sensor with a PL mount uh, going up to 4K resolution, right? Uh, and up to 120 frames per second. Uh, this is a, this is a 14 plus stop dynamic range sensor. Very beautiful and an impressive imagery overall. So really excited to have a 35 millimeter Vericam here. Uh, so these heads are interchangeable, as I was saying. They can go on the same basic recorder, which is back here. The recorder has all the features in it and can sort of snap in between the two. So you could buy one camera and then buy another head later if you wanted to, or just buy one or the other. Uh, so I want to give you an idea how these two things to go together. And as an analogy. Uh, I wanted to show you the, the way the, the an HS uh, that a, uh, a quick release plate works from Panasonic. This is a traditional quick release plate you might find on the, uh, you know, on a Sony or Panasonic camera. We've all used these probably. Now this system has a little lever and you release it and it has a spring load mechanism. Panasonic has uh, used this system for many years on their, on their ENG cameras and they know it's solid and strong so they kind of implemented something very similar on the camera itself. Uh, if you see here on the back of the HS, you have that same little red lever and a black piece. When you do that, pull it back like so, it engages this sort of wedge piece, which then can lock into place. If I pull back the lock mechanism here, you see it snaps downward. That's how it locks. You pull it back up, that's how it's engaged to go, right? So we can pull apart the system very easily and, and lock it together very strong. Um, from this part of the tour onward, I'm just going to focus on uh, the, um, the uh, 35 because it's already here in one piece. Uh, but just know that everything about the HS head is basically identical to the 35 outside of that uh, two-third inch B-form mount system. Uh, and the fact that the cam this camera actually has uh, color filter wheels as well as NDs, but otherwise identical. So put this down just for sake of space. Uh, the 35 here, again, being very, very, very similar, basically the same design. Uh, but here I'll show you once again a mechanism for taking it apart and putting together the cameras. To release the system, I put down the red lever, pull back, and wedge it apart just like that. So now I have two back pieces here, as you can see. And if you notice here, I have a little, I have a little lip here, and I have a little latch there. I'm going to put the two together, and then that, and that, that, that spring load mechanism will lock right into place here. So to put them back together again, I just put that lip below this guy like that, kind of wedge it down at an angle, and then snap into place, and it locked in, I heard it, and it's together, it's one piece, very solid, right? It's impressive. Uh, the camera's made of all metals, so very strong, uh, virtually no plastic on here, very nice design. It's a big deal in a world of plastic cameras to have something solid and steel, um, well, or a solid aluminum alloy. Um, continuing the tour, though, on the head itself, which is again the same as the HS, I have three assignable buttons here, right? The user one, two, and three. And below that I have switches for ISO or EI, well, white balance, shutter speed, things like that. Nice to have. I can also lock it out with a little button there. Uh, in the front corner I have my uh, good old ND filter wheel, uh, three, six, and nine filters. I have the same thing uh, on my HS head, but also have those color filter wheels for different things. Um, PL mount here on the camera, very solid PL mount. Uh, certainly could hang a heavy lens off of there without being worried. Um, around the side here, viewfinder mechanism. The viewfinder mechanism is nice. It actually harkens back to the old 
EMG systems, which worked just fine, worked really well. Release it and it can go forward and backward. Release it here, go side to side, it's super straightforward and easy. And it has a release too to pull the viewfinder off. Uh, the viewfinder connects via a Limo plug, multi-pin Limo, super strong. Not, it's a proprietary cable, but because it's just multi-pin Limo on both sides, I can get it fixed, I can get new cables, I can get longer cables. Pretty straightforward there. Uh, and then I have below that a viewfinder SDI output. This is a mirrored viewfinder output. So whatever I see here, I basically get on that output as well. This is a big deal for onboard monitoring if you don't want to use a viewfinder or just for your AC. Uh, and then finally, I have, down this row here, I have a um, power output, a Limo 2-pin. Uh, it's 12-volt output. has one amp on it, so you can power some accessories that way. Uh, over here, I have a 5-pin XLR for stereo input, so you put your stereo mic on if you want to. Uh, and then finally below that, I have a, uh, a multi-pin uh, uh, lens port. Uh, this is the same kind of lens plug you would have on an ENG camera. Uh, see, actually, on the HS, you have the same things as well. This multi-pin uh, can connect to an ENG lens, two third inch lens, to control the servo. It also works with the lenses like the uh, Fujinon Cabrio or the Nan new Canon Cine Servo. Plug it right in, talks, it powers, it zooms, it does everything you want it to. So it's a good option today. And you're seeing this more and more on cameras like the Amira or the F55. Uh, again, still nice to have that as an option. Okay. Uh, finally, a, a assignable button on the back here uh, for the head. This is the fourth assignable button. You can actually get more assignables, but that's in the menus to do more. So that's nice. Uh, mechanism. Here we go on the back side. Actually, the, the outputs here are many, many, which is a great thing. On the 35, a 4K sensor, you can put out 4K, S, uh, 4K via SDI. So there's four SDIs here, which you can actually put out four quadrants of a as of an HD uh, of a 4K signal. These four, so you put all four of them, plug into a 4K monitor like this one, ta-da, 4K, very nice. If you don't have a 4K monitor though, don't worry, you still have lots of outputs for HD. Two monitor outputs at the bottom. These are assignable to do multiple things. You can actually put characters on them, like you know, boxes and look arounds and things like that on there, uh, frame lines, etc. You can actually put lookup tables on these independently as well. So if you're using shooting and log in the camera. These can be assigned to have lookup tables or not, etc. Uh, final, and then on the side here too, time code and gen lock, uh, time code in, in or out, and gen lock, of course, important to have for multi-camera use. Um, over here, two XLR three pins, line, mic, or AES for two channel. So via, that, via analog, we get two more analog channels, or via AES, you get four digital channels. So nice to have, of course. And then XLR four pin, for power, 12 volt, standard 12 volt power. Draws, draws a good amount of wattage, but definitely less than, than a lot of digital cameras today. So about 90 watts all in, but pretty not bad at all. And then a uh, four pin Hiroshi here for some power output as well as start stop. So you can get a start stop cable for this camera that plugs into that guy, just like a F55, very similar uh, pinning. Uh, on the back here, Anton Bauer plate, just like always Anton Bauer. Uh, and very cam to go together. Uh, of course, you could switch that out for B lock or anything else you wanted to put back there. Uh, and it has a P tap on that, very important. And then on top of this camera, you can kind of see it here, this little guy there. Uh, that is a, uh, uh, a little door which you can remove, and underneath is a multi pin connector that you can connect a, a Codex uh, RAW recorder to it. This Codex RAW recorder snaps on back here and attaches there, and that enables RAW output of the camera. Uh, all the way through its frame rate. So it's a <clears throat> nice add-on coming later. You can snap it on there and we'll, we'll see what that can do when it comes out. It's pretty cool. Uh, back to the far side, this is again the recorder module. On the back here I have a interface system. This is the main interface for the camera. It has things like white balance, shutter, uh, frame rates, and the full menu system all via this interface. So it's not a touchscreen display, it's a button pushing scroll wheel system similar to what we see in other cameras out there. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but nice about this one is it is uh, movable. Uh, it has a little release up here. When you do that, you can pull it off and put it somewhere else. It's not wireless. Uh, wireless is a little buggy. We all know that. Uh, instead, it has an interface in the back here. And I can use a little relocator doodad here, put that in there, and then move it somewhere else. 
actually comes with uh, a little mounting bracket so you can screw it in various other places on the camera. Uh, so your AC can be uh, using it and adjusting it as you go. It even has a button on here to turn it into a very small monitor. So it's just a handy little way of working with the system. And it is hot swappable, meaning while you're running, you can pop it off and relocate it. It won't crash the camera, nothing weird happens. It works like it's supposed to. So uh, pop it on, pop it off, it's, it's okay. Uh, and then finally on the recorder module here, uh, below I have two doors, and this is where all my media goes in, right? So uh, under door number one, uh, we have uh, two uh, P2 Express slots. These are uh, the, the fast P2 cards that uh, are out now, and not like the original ones at all, but faster and actually thicker. Uh, I need a new card reader, new everything there. Uh, these guys can record 4K up to 120 frames, or can record in your... Uh, uh, HD on the HS up to 240 frames. So on the H you need the HS to get 240 HD, but otherwise you can get 120 on the, on the 35. Um, that's all on the main recording, but you also have the sub recording here. The sub recording is limited to HD at regular frame rates, but it can happen at the same time as the main recording, and the main recording can be in log, and the sub recording can have a LUT on it. The sub recording can also go to a lower quality for even smaller files. So it's a simultaneous recording system uh, allows you to have an offline, online post process. Very cool. And then also on the secondary recording, you can have a third recording in a proxy format. Very small, like tiny little file you can email somebody. So you could have a, a tiny file to email somebody, an offline editing HD copy, and also a full quality 4K or HD uh, master copy here all in one place. Three recordings at once. Throw in the raw, that's four recordings at once if you had that. So tons of options. And then SD card slot as well, above the sort of micro P2 card slots, which is the sub recording. Micro P2, by the way, uh, is essentially an SDXC card, a uh, very high speed card, not your standard SD card, but uh, you, can, you have to use micro P2 with this system, but it's very reliable and stronger than a regular SD card. So, uh, but there is an SD, an SD card slot at the top there, which will work with any SD card, and it can uh, read scene files and firmware, things like that. That's, that's right there. So nice option. All right. Uh, last but far not least is the viewfinder itself. This viewfinder is an OLED viewfinder. Very pretty. Very nice. It has an, an optical zoom on the viewfinder. So you can actually zoom in the picture, bigger or smaller for your preference. And it has a diopter as well. So really, everyone's loving the viewfinder. Uh, at 24p, there is a smoothing out mode. So you can even make it really smooth. We've seen that feature before. Uh, on the side of the viewfinder, there's uh, two assignable buttons to do things like zooming in or turn the smooth mode on or false color or on any number of things, waveform, etc. cetera. Uh, you can do that all in the viewfinder with the, by these buttons. Uh, below that, I have two more buttons, which are uh, menu control buttons. One's for the viewfinder to set up the user buttons and turn things on or off, change it to black and white, etc. And then the other one's the camera menu button. Hit the camera menu button and you can control all the camera menus if you want to. It's got a scroll wheel there to control that as well. So it's a full interface uh, for the camera allowing you to be a single operator if you want to be, just using it all as one piece, and especially on the HS, that's a nice feature. Or you can set it up to use with a second operator, have an AC. Uh, definitely a nice hybrid design. I really like the fact that the very cam is so uh, variable, I guess you could say, both in frame rate and in sort of function. So there's been a lot of things in this camera. It's very functional, very surprising in a sense of just how much they put into it, and it's already available on release. New firmware coming in the future does even more, add things like ProRes, et cetera. So we'll keep seeing it evolving, but already it does a lot of stuff and the picture looks good. So uh, that's it for now on the tour. I'm gonna go into next the side panel here, go over what you can do on the side, just look at that, uh, and a couple things about the recording codex and LUTs and stuff too. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.